For a sports car we need two seats, two doors, a rear wheel drive configuration and a sporty transmission. It seems to us that the E63 M6 Coupe ticks all the boxes. Not fully but you get it, did you? For years and years, BMW fans asked the German car maker to bring back the 6 Series, whose production was stopped in 1989. In 2003 it returned and, in 2005 it was unleashed with a mighty V10 engine in the form of the M6. The E63 M6 is a modernish coupe with 500 horsepower, right wheel drive and the compelling prospect of a rev ravenous V10 under its heavily curved bonnet. For perspective it has got more power than a 997911 turbo of the same timeline. The first generation of the 6 series didn't have an M6. It had an M635 CSI, which was almost the same thing. But the first, true, M6 was introduced at the 2005 Geneva Motor Show. It was more than an upgraded version of a 6 series. It was almost a completely different car. It shared some parts with the less powered versions, but most of it was different. For starters, the roof was made out of carbon fiber to lower the center of gravity. The front and rear bumpers were different and so were the side sills. A different set of wheels and a quad exhaust completed the package. Like all the M vehicles, it didn't have any big wing on the trunk, but there was an underbody aerodynamic package to increase downforce. And it didn't matter that the overall design was not one of the best in the company's history. Inside, the M6 was available in a 2 plus 2 configuration. The front bucket seats featured high bolstering to keep the occupants in place while hard cornering. The leather upholstery was carefully crafted to enhance the luxury. The M6 was supposed to be more of a GT than a sports car, but it managed to be more on the performance side. The technology inside was at the top level. It started with a naturally aspirated 5.0-liter V10 engine mated to a 7-speed SMG, single-clutch automated gearbox, fitted as standard in Europe. A 6-speed manual was available in the US. The suspension was stiffened to cope with the high-performance engine. Let's start with the good. The E63 M6 launched just behind the E60 M5 and used the same engine. A specially developed 5.0-liter naturally aspirated V10 which revved to a dizzying 8,250 revolutions per minute. Officially the DECA pot layout was inspired by the configuration of that era's Formula 1 engines, although regulations had changed to a V8 for 2006 when BMW bought Sauber, but it was also undoubtedly chosen to keep up with Audi Sports switch to its own Lambo-derived 5.2-liter V10. At 1,785 kilograms the M6 was slightly lighter than the saloon thanks in part to a carbon fiber roof, and at the time it was launched it was the fastest road going BMW of all time. sprint took 4.6 seconds, it could get to 100 miles per hour from rest in under 10 and, but for that pesky speed limiter, M engineers claimed it would be capable of cracking 200 miles per hour. By the standards of the time it was savagely fast, but it was also much less of a comfy GT than the bigger M cars that followed it. The V10 always sounded a bit rough under gentle use, there's an almost easily harmonic at idle, and there isn't much go until about 3,500 RPM. The gearbox is one of the automated single-clutch SMG units that blighted a generation of performance BMWs, with sometimes lunge-prone reactions and a distinct pause between ratios. It will work better under full manual control, as lifting off smooth part throttle upshifts. Dynamically the rest of the M6 should be pretty much spot on, indeed in many ways this and the E60 M5 stand out as high watermarks. The steering is close to perfection in terms of both weighting and feedback, 
giving a sense of connection to the front axle that M's electrically assisted racks just can't match. The chassis balance is similarly finely judged, with the engine's limited lowdown torque and ultra-fine throttle response, allowing you to pretty much at one horse at a time. The M6 stays remarkably friendly as the rear starts to run out of grip. The turbocharged F13 M6 that followed was quicker everywhere, but it wasn't anything like as much fun to pedal, but the rest of the 6 series hasn't aged quite as well. Time has turned Chris Bangle's design a bit blobby and melted, it's a personal take but I think the E60 now looks far better. Everyday running costs will be wince inducing, even brimming the 70 liter tank is unlikely to give more than 250 miles of real world range and harder use will see the needle sagging in real time. Some good news is that it is impossible to see worse than 7 miles per gallon displayed on the trip computer, but that's only because this is the lowest value it can show. Service intervals are just 9,000 miles and the V10 has expensive tastes in both oil and spark plugs. A hard-driven M6 will also devour tires and snack on brakes. But it is the potential for out-of-routine costs that turn truly scary, both in terms of known risks but also the complicated powertrain's ability to throw huge bills out of left field. The S85 V10 can suffer from rod-bearing failure normally the result of engines being thrashed from cold, and oil starvation can also lead to spun big end bearings which will likely destroy the engine. But while the engine's meltdowns are maybes the ability of the SMG to drop pound bombs is pretty much a given. Early cars, like this one, can suffer from premature pump failure, clutches wear quickly under harder use and the transmission can throw judders and vibration from worn bushes and bearings. The feared red cog dashboard light is almost always a sign things are about turn seriously spendy. When new BMW charged a substantial premium for the M6 over the M5, this car had a pre-options list price of £81,760 at the same time as the saloon was just £63,495 only. That made the coupe considerably rarer than the saloon, but these days there is no difference in values for cars of similar age and mileage. So what do you think? The E63 M6 can be called a BMW sports car?